Morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Breakout Trading Answered, the show where we talk about all things breakout trading. And of course, today joining us is Thomas Nesnado, breakout trading specialist. G'day, Thomas. Well, good evening, hey, Thomas. Hey, welcome, everyone. Good evening, good morning. Thank you for having me. And we're going to talk about breakout trading, answer your questions, and talk about some very, very, very cool stuff regarding breakout trading today, as we usually do Exactly. So the uh, we're currently through going through a series called How to Make Breakout Trading Work. And the last couple of episodes, we've been focusing on specific markets. And today we're going to be talking about which market or which sector slash group, Thomas. Today we're going to talk about metals. Metals. And do you know what is so cool about metals, Andrew? <laughs> What's so cool about metals, Thomas? The, the best thing, the only key reason why you have to have metals in your portfolio is that because if you tell your friends that you trade futures, they think, they think that you're cuckoo. But if you tell them you trade <laughs> gold, they think that you're cool. So just, you know, you have to keep gold in your portfolio so you can tell your friends, <laughs> I trade gold. And then you'll be a big friend of theirs. Yeah. Yeah, and the gold market is a good one to trade, which I'm sure you're going exactly. to uh, tell us a little bit more about um, on the uh, show today. But let's go to the chat because I can see we've got quite a few hellos here. G'day, Rob. Good to see you again. Egyptian is here. Hey, Hugo. How you doing, Martin, Mark? The usual suspects. Good to see you all. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, guys. Good to see you again. Now, I'm, I'm interested to know, do we have any metals traders in the group here? Anyone trade uh, the metals markets? Let us know in the chat. It'll be interesting to know if you're uh, if you're at that stage or not. Hey, Sco, good to see you. And while we're waiting for a bit of that feedback, Thomas, did you want to uh, start with a small announcement? Yeah, I have. I before we start, guys, I have something small to share. Actually, it's something I'm pretty proud of. We've just released the latest issue of our uh, Empire Trader newsletter. And uh, this one is pretty cool. There's an interview with uh, BTA student Adam. The interview is called uh, An Encouraging Story of Adam and His Trading Journey from Losses to 1.2 Million. So that alone is very inspirational story worth reading uh, there are also in the magazine we have examples equity curves we have codes we have a fantastic article about commitment of traders uh, from of our uh, one of our elite uh, elite students so great great contribution about how to uh, apply uh, commitment of traders to breakout uh, strategies again including codes examples uh, calculations so a lot of practical uh, information the beauty of this newsletter is that it's highly practical so whatever you learn you can immediately um, immediately apply to your trading then we have also second part of uh, advanced entropy technique from our another elite uh, member uh, Al. So again, codes, uh, charts, everything included. And by the way, this is not just a newsletter. This is not just this printed fully color uh, magazine, but part of the newsletter, there's always a special bonus section. It's a downloadable section where we usually uh, also provide some codes, charts, Excel spreadsheet, and additional material. So it's not just a newsletter. It's a lot of additional stuff which are part of the newsletter and then just to let you know uh, any new subscriber to this quarterly newsletter it's a quarterly newsletter so you have plenty of time to implement all these great techniques every new subscriber gets for free as a gift this algo trading black book which uh, we wrote together with andrew and just to let you know this is the thickest uh, algo trading book on the market probably the thickest i've ever seen it's got actually over 600 pages or almost 600 pages. And again, you will find a lot of tips and uh, tricks and advices regarding trading uh, and, and of course charts and 
equity curves and uh, analysis and a lot of helpful stuff. So this is a free present for every new Empowered Trader subscriber. Uh, and you can see the link below already. This is where you can uh, become a subscriber, get this fantastic book, get this latest issue, and also get uh, some other cool stuff. So that was the announcement, Andrew. Excellent. Thanks for sharing that, Thomas. Uh, we've got a couple more hellos. Hey, uh, <laughs> woohoo beef stew. <laughs> G'day, I love the name. That's, I'm not sure what it means, but uh, welcome. Balandra, good to see you here again. And uh, okay, so we've got some gold traders here. Rob is current, well, Rob's working on gold. Egyptian good. is is gold trading gold. Martin is also working on gold. So I think what you're going to see from Thomas today is very timely. It's going to be very helpful. So, um, and Woohoo says that book is thick. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Excellent. Well, Thomas, shall we get into the. Uh, the main sure uh, yes yeah. let's talk about medals guys uh, so let's if you can bring up slides please andrew that would be awesome I and sure uh, can. here we go thank you so we talk about medals so first of all uh let's we i think we can jump uh, two slides ahead because mm -hmm. i've already did my duty and share the empower trader and now <laughs> now let's let's talk about the uh white metal market so this is quite interesting you know uh, i already share with you that uh, i really love certain uh market sectors like i like love indexes i love energies i really like grains and uh, you know if you ask me about metals i'm like ah oh, it's fine like it's okay and for some reason <laughs> I don't have this deep emotional attachment to medals, and I don't know why. Maybe because medals really, in my trading career, medals were uh, happened happened to be in my portfolio later in my career. So it definitely was one of the market sector that I managed to crack uh, later on. Not like energies or indexes, which were among the first. Uh, so that's that's maybe why my sentiment to medals uh, isn't as high as for some other sectors. However, uh, my hedge fund team, they love metals. Uh, I don't know why. They, maybe they like love gold or whatever. Uh, they just love metals. And actually, I was very surprised when I was preparing this show and I, I was putting together uh, the number of uh, high-quality tradable breakout strategies for metals, algorithmic breakout strategies that we have in our hedge fund. I was surprised how many we have them. So if you can move to the next slide, mm. I realized that we have 200 uh, high quality breakout strategies on medals, which is more than I thought. I, I, because as I said, uh, I don't have uh, really attachment to uh, or strong sentiment for these markets. <coughs> I, I, I didn't expect we have so many. Uh, but we do, and uh, it's it's obviously it's a pretty another pretty strong sector uh, for breakout trading strategies, and that's one of the reasons why I uh, brought it next as as a fourth in the row because I think it's 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 for the for easiest uh, to create uh, strategies on. Now, don't get me wrong, uh, a lot of metal uh, future markets uh, are already more challenging uh, for breakout uh, algorithmic breakout trading than than other markets uh, so for example high grade cooper uh, or silver which are by the way i i like high grade cooper i don't know why uh, but uh, i don't know just to me it's a pretty cool volatile uh, market with a lot of uh, big movements. Uh, so high grade Cooper and silver are quite uh, complicated, but gold is definitely not only that gold is a very popular commodity, very tradable commodity, good liquidity, but it's 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 definitely the easiest uh, metal market you can create a strategy on. And you can create a strategy on gold pretty quickly. Uh, it's not a complicated one. Uh, you can uh, you can use extended uh, uh, time session. Uh, 
by the way, uh, this was Andrew's first ever market that he used with extended time session. And uh, this way he inspired the rest of us to start using extended overnight uh, trading sessions as well. Uh, but overall, I think gold is really, really neat, uh, neat market. And there's no reason why you shouldn't or couldn't have it in portfolio. Uh, and uh, if not the rest, because the rest is more complicated, silver, high-grade high, high copper can get quite uh, complicated. And with platinum, there is a problem of uh, big slippages. It's, it can get, at the, initially we didn't have a bit slippage, but over time we accumulated some data. It can be sometimes complicated. Uh, so these, tr these three markets are already more challenging, but gold, it's, it's really awesome. Um, what is your experience with gold, Andrew, and with metals? Um, I love gold. It's uh, it's a great market to trade, especially with some of those extended sessions, as you were just saying. Um, uh, silver is more. I've found silver to be more tricky. It's kind of like my nemesis market. I've tried so hard, and hmm. haven't really <laughs> made good way with uh, with breakouts. Um, at the moment, I'm doing a lot of mean reversion work, and copper market is fantastic for mean reversion. So, um, I think generally they're really good markets to trade. I love them. Hmm. Do do you mine gold in uh, Australia? Do you have uh, gold mines? Yeah, yeah. We're very um, very resource heavy country. So, yeah. great, great. So let's let's now talk a little bit more about this market. So if we can move to the next slide, please. Yep. So now we're going to talk about which metal markets. And if we have a look on next slide, there are basically. Uh, five different uh, futures markets uh, on um, uh, in this in this category uh, so so as we already said gold is number one gold is amazing amazing uh, futures market that's why we gave it a big yes uh, and you can create both swing trading and day trading strategies as well we can uh, Create. In our hedge fund, in the database, we have both day trading and swing strategies, really good, universal, strong market. Silver is a little bit more complicated, but with uh, some patience, you can uh, create strategies. Uh, but we, all of them we have in hedge fund are swing strategies uh, with high grade copper. Again, you really need to be patient, but it's doable. Uh, and again, for swing strategies. Platinum, as I said, you need to be careful. I would probably leave it for later. Uh, initially, we had good experience with this market, but uh, after collecting uh, more data uh, with uh, the execution, it seems to be uh, more at, uh, more on a tiny side uh, when it comes to liquidity. So uh, you need to be careful. You need to create a good average trade to be ready for bigger slippages. And there's also palladium and palladium it's totally no 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 tradable very tiny market and i remember a story because about 10 years ago uh, i was in chicago it was in times when uh, you know algorithmic uh, full algorithmic electronic trading was still a little bit in an infancy and i think it was one of the last years of uh, the trading pit in uh, it was actually new york it wasn't chicago it was in new york and we were a trading pit and we were walking, um, you know, this, this craters where traders shout, used to shout at each other. Yeah. And, uh, yes, um, realizing these uh, orders. And uh, it was really neat because, for example, for, for crude oil, you could, you could always see a big, big group of uh, traders and shouting at each other. And as we were passing through the market, uh, each each part of the trading pit for each market had quite a good amount of people there. Just in the corner, I remember there was a corner and there was a small table and there were like three guys, very old guys. And we asked the guy, what is this? Is this still part of the trading pit, trading floor? And who are these guys? And, and he said, well, that small corner, that small table, it's Palladium market. <laughs> These three people, they uh, they do all palladium trading. Nobody knows their, their names. Nobody knows where they're from. They've been 
coming there for 40 <laughs> years. Nobody knows which uh, companies they represent, uh, <laughs> but I think it gives you a good idea how tiny <laughs> in control the Palladium market is. So mm. since then, uh, I swear I will not touch Palladium uh, because uh, it seems to be quite control market probably in hands of you. Uh, so I have my own opinion. And although there's a full transparency on commodity exchange, I'm not sure that Palladium is here meant to be for algorithmic trading traders. Mm, yeah. We got a good question in the chat actually along the lines of um, transparency from Chris. Let me put this one up on the screen. Thanks for the question, Chris. Does manipulation of the paper market in silver and even gold impact our trading outlook at all? Um, I don't understand why or how could the uh, gold market be manipulated. I'm not sure if I understand that. Yeah, I think he's talking about the uh, there's a lot of um, paper shorts in the silver and gold markets to keep the price down. And it seems to be intentional. Um, but uh, how would that type of thing impact our trading outlook? Would it? Or do we ignore that? Um, I, would, I, would, I would say like this. Uh, I think my trading results on gold and silver do, do not suggest that there would be anything unfavorable for uh, our algorithmic trading the way we do it with these statistical uh, advantages and uh, with this um, with the process uh, as we as we do it so there could be of course there could be some potential manipulation but I don't really think that our style of um, uh, trading uh, is would or would be impacted by, by it at least I do not feel an impact of any manipulation uh, when trading gold or silver. Here's a little bit more um, from Pete. Mm -hmm. JP Morgan has been busted for more than 10,000 manipulations and fined $950 million for it, which is probably a small fine compared to how much money they can make. Now they can't trade their own account in metals, which is mm. interesting. Yeah. Okay. We probably shouldn't talk too much about that or we'll get banned. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. What you say these exactly. days. I did say another. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I did see another question. Oh, here it is from Mark about copper. This is a good one too. Um, uh, Thomas, what do you mean by copper is complicated? It's a, yeah, it's a good question. So it's difficult to find a good robustness level two or robustness level three strategy for a copper. You need to be really patient. So sometimes it can take, take you months and a lot of, lot of strategy candidates to get a good viable strategy on Copper. It just it looks like it's way harder to find edge on copper compared to energies or um, grains or indexes or even gold. You need to be super patient. It takes a lot of time. Yeah. Okay. Just going through the chat, we've got a few more questions here. We'll do this one from Rob, and then we'll um, and then we'll move on. I think. Uh, here we go. From Rob, wouldn't algo trading account for it in the historical data anyway? And then a comment from Mark, even if it's manipulated, and I believe it is, algo trading would pick up on the patterns. Yeah, exactly. That's that's exactly. That's yeah. it. Like, you know, you know, um, patterns are patterns. Markets still move up and down. And even if there's some manipulation and there's artificially pushed price higher or lower, there are still patterns. There are still, still repetitive, uh, statistically significant probabilities. So I'm not sure. Like I, I do not feel. I, I cannot say that I would feel any kind of market manipulation on my own gold trading, or silver mm. trading, or any metal trading. Yep. Yep. So back to the slides. I've got a question for you on gold. Have you had uh, a lot of luck with day trading on gold? I see there's a lot of, um, you know, swing comments on this slide and you do have uh, DT at the end there. But what has your experience been with day trading on gold, especially with the extended sessions? Yeah. Uh, so quite frankly, we do have day trading uh, strategies uh, on gold in database. And I think I, I even have some example for you later on. 
but okay. we currently we we do not trade uh, day trading strategy on gold. Uh, we only in live trading we only trade swing strategies. I think it was due to average trade, uh, which was too low for the number of contracts that we execute, and I think it was related to overnight session and slippages. So uh, I think if you if you have a strategy with with a reasonable average trade and you trade just a couple of contracts, I think. It's it's doable. It's okay, but obviously there can be big uh, bigger slippage than mm -hmm. normally uh, during the night. So yeah, once once you start executing uh, ten tens dozens of contracts or even hundreds of contracts, uh, it's definitely better to stay with swing strategies. Yep. All right, Thomas. Do you want to continue with the slides? Yes, please. Uh, okay. So. Uh, I presented markets. Now let's talk about uh, our our uh, usual topic: uh, time sessions, time templates. Because this is quite interesting. Uh, mm. So when it comes to gold, so again, uh, this one goes to you, Andrew. That was your invention. <laughs> uh, we can we can pretty much trade gold with overnight session as well. And currently. We use these two sessions in our hedge fund, 3.25 night to 1.25 p.m. or 7.25 to 4 p.m., which, which look like two completely different time sessions, and they are, they obviously are, but uh, this way you can also create uh, strat really different gold strategies with uh, lower correlations. So I think that's another pretty neat thing about gold that you can really have Two completely different uh, time sessions, and um, they both mm. seem to work. So that's what we use right now. For silver, we have still quite standard, very close to regular trading hours, 8.25, 1.25 p.m. For high-grade copper, we have 7.30 to 1. And for platinum, we have 9.05 to 1.05. So the rest of this market, it's still pretty much uh, in correspondence with regular trading hours. And I think this is overall uh, metals is as a category. It's one of the um, sectors uh, which is still picking up on uh, overnight trading quite slowly. So except for the gold, which obviously is already tradable overnight and there seems to be quite a big or good advantage or even a small edge in uh, expanding these uh, sessions. The rest of the uh, sector is pretty much lagging with overnight sessions, especially com when we compare them with indexes or, um, or um, energies or others. So let's see. Hopefully it will improve in the future, but uh, right now it's still mostly tradable just during these uh, pretty much regular trading hours. And that means you also need to be wary of, uh, wary of um, possible overnight gaps. Uh, I remember that when we had overnight gaps uh, in our hedge fund, I remember that one of the biggest were actually, if I rem remember well, on silver. Like we, we experienced some big overnight gaps, both positive and negative on silver. That can be a very gappy market. Mm, overall, yeah. all, overall, all all metal markets can be quite guppy. There can be there can be nasty uh, overnight gaps. So something to be aware of and careful about. <clears throat> yeah, I've had a lot of success with that three twenty five to thirteen twenty five session in gold. I think it um, works amazingly well. So mm. uh, if you're new to gold, try that one. And uh, I haven't tested seven twenty five to fourteen hundred, sixteen hundred. So thanks for that. I'm going to load it up and see how it goes. <laughs> That's a good tip. Great. Um, got a question here from Egyptian in the chat. Uh, yeah. Let's put this one up. Are all your swing gold strategies both long and short? Uh, I will provide some example. Today I prepared some okay. example. I don't remember from my head, uh, uh, to be honest, but I believe they are... Uh, they should be. Yeah, there, there's probably small bias. I think I would expect there will be small bias on the long side. But uh, we, 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 I would say 95 strategies in our hedge fund, we trade both sides. So we'll see later in examples. I, I do have some examples, but should be both sides. 
Yeah, Rod, Rob put a question or a comment up about that, actually. Is it preferable to include long short regularly when developing strategies for metals? Yeah, it's preferable. It's preferable both, mm. both yeah. sides, long and short, definitely. You know, these markets are not so... Although it's it's discutable with gold, there can be a long bias, but these markets are not as biased as, let's say, indexes. Uh, so it's definitely preferable to go both long and short side. Yep. All right. Okay, we got a trade station question from Christian, which we'll save to the end, Christian. Um, so I'll put the slides back up, Thomas, and we can continue. Uh, okay, so we talked about uh, time sessions, time templates, which is always uh, very important. Uh, if you don't have right time sessions, uh, time templates, it can take you a lot of time to find something viable. But we also need to talk about time frames. And this is quite interesting with time frames because uh, metals are definitely one of the markets where we're only successful with uh, higher time frames. Uh, with, with different markets, we can be successful with 30 minutes, 45 minutes. Here, we are uh, rather successful with higher, like even 80-minute time frames. Uh, so when I uh, went through the deep database of our strategies on metals, uh, the vast majority was 60 or 80 minutes for gold, 60 to 80, 60 or 80, silver, platinum, 80, and high-grade copper, 60 minutes. Uh, so it's quite interesting. It's quite interesting, but definitely nothing lower than this. Uh, it, it doesn't work on medals, at least for us. Uh, and of course, uh, as usually, all these, what I'm referring to, it's all these with the, uh, with our proprietary uh, breakout strategies framework that some or many of you already know from the breakout strategies masterclass. So with this framework, we're only successful with these time frames on medals. I don't know, Andrew, if you have some other experience with different uh, time frames as well. Uh, no, generally the longer time frames seem to work um, better in metals as well. So we've found the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, good. So that's about, do we have some question? Um, just a clarification from Egyptian. Um, uh, yeah, I'll put it up on the screen. So I think this is an extension of um, should you build long and short oh, okay. um, strategies together or should you separate them out and build specific further direction? Yeah, definitely together, not separately, together, on medals together. Yeah. And now I have some exciting part, which actually I should have done before already, but uh, somebody just asked uh, last time if, if we can include some examples. So I put out a couple of examples from our database for each market so we can have a look. So if we can move to the next slide. So first example, it's an, it's an example of a strategy for gold. This is a 60 minute time frame, a long short. And actually this one is day trading. So I just wanted to show that it's totally uh, viable to create a day trading, even day trading gold strategy. Uh, we can see that we have a small bias on a short side because on short side, it, it the net profit is 82,000. On long side, it's 55. But overall, the average rate is 130, uh, uh, which I think it's pretty good uh, for day trading strategy. So totally tradable. Uh, net profit 138k versus 12k drawdown, so that's more than 10 to 1, very nice as well. Uh, and um, yeah, this is this is an example of few day trading strategies that we have uh, in the hedge fund uh, for gold. Uh, as I said, we do not currently deploy any of them in real. Uh, tra in real time trading, but this is a typical um, example. By the way, this vertical uh, vertical line, anything after that, it's already true out of sample. So that's after the strategy uh, was created. So that's gathering the data uh, since we created and put the strategy in our database. 
So as you can see, totally doable. It's totally do doable to create even a day trading strategy uh, on gold. You might need you might need to be a little bit more patient, uh, and there still will be probably a, a bit higher drawdown, but it's totally doable. Yeah, Thomas. Just to explain, what's to the left of the line? You said the, oh, the yeah. to the right of the line is true out of sample. What's the left? Yeah, yeah, that, that's a thank you. That's a good reminder. So the left side, it's the left side is compiled out of sample equity. So there is no in sample. This one is compiled out of sample equity. Again, uh, as you probably know from the breakout strategies masterclass, this is what we call the history uh, code. So this is all out of sample uh, compiled. So no, no in sample here. And this is true uh, out of sample. This is uh, this is since we created uh, as we keep gathering data. So good question. Thank you. Yep. Next slide. Yeah. So next one is uh, gold for long short. This is obviously a big uh, uh, older strategy already because we already have way more trades after the vertical um, line. So it's been a while in our database. It's been performing pretty well in uh, through out of sample in alignment with with everything before, and here you can see uh, that um, surprise. It's 80 minute, and uh, here we have so in the previous strategy day trading, which is pretty interesting. We had a bias on the short side. We had a higher profit uh, and more trades on the short side. Now we have a bias on a long long side. We have mm -hmm. a high profit uh, on the long side. Uh, not 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 more trades, but uh, higher profit and higher uh, average trade, which is quite interesting because this also suggests that you can really create uh, two quite different strategies on gold. Uh, I did not try correlations, but I bet if you have day trading uh, gold strategy and swing trading and especially if you create them on one of these two different time templates you really can even if it's same market you can already achieve a pretty good uh, correlation uh, which is not obvious with every market but you know in in with gold this possibility is here and also another in interesting thing is that this uh, strategy this uh, swing strategy produce lower average trade than the uh, day trading strategy, uh, but it's got also very high uh, sample size. It's almost 1,300 trades. Uh, so not necessarily swing always means better, higher average trade, uh, but uh, definitely a good a comp companion to a day trading. I think it can be really neat to create long short swing and, and long short uh, day trading and put them together. Overall, again, quite pretty decent parameters. Uh, we have uh, net profit drawdown ratio uh, close to 10 to 1, uh, very good uh, and high sample size. And uh, that's that's pretty much some strategies that we have in database have uh, lower sample size. We also have some strategies which is four or 500 uh, trade sample size. Uh, so not always you have such a high sample size, but Overall, it's totally doable to create good strategy like this on a gold. Yep, we've got a question on this one from Hugo. Mm -hmm. Hugo, does this strategy have long and short? Are they asymmetrical? Uh, I don't know exactly from the head right now. Mm -hmm. It's possible, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. We mostly use asymmetrical on indexes and... Uh, and energies, so I would have to double check. Hard to say. Maybe yes, maybe yes, maybe no. But I can I can guarantee you that uh, we definitely do have symmetrical fractions uh, on metals on all all. Not not every market we have uh, and every strategy in our database is asymmetrical. We have a lot of actually we have more symmetricals than asymmetricals. So you definitely can create a good viable strategy on metals with symmetrical fraction. Totally yes, totally doable. Yep. Okay. We've got a question here from Martin on momentum versus mean reversion. <clears throat> Martin, we'll save that one for the end. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to that. I've got it in my notes. So uh, mm -hmm. we'll just continue with these examples. So let's now. go next one. Next one. 
Yeah, Silver, the bad silver. boy. So, yeah, <laughs> tough one. It's a tough yeah. one. But again, you, you can see a pretty nice uh, real-time out of sample. And we have pretty equal long and short. Uh, net profit, it's, it's quite balanced when it comes to net profit. Uh, so that's interesting. Overall, I think this is a nice thing about silver, uh, that once you figure out a strategy for silver, you usually have really good average trade. So this one has got 233 uh, a swing trade. And also I forgot to mention that all our swing trades are closed on Friday. So whenever I present any swing strategy on any market, it, it is always closed on Friday. So we never hold more, more than four or five days. And it, this is a pretty good average trade. It's $233. And $233, you know, that's one of the reasons why it really, um, why in, in our hedge fund, we do put a lot of effort uh, into uh, creating strategies uh, on silver. Even it's a hard market and tough market. And, uh, you know, um, market really, you need to be really patient to create something. But the reason is that we can get a, good high average trade, which means we can trade a lot of contracts in our hedge fund. Although I have to say one thing, I have to mention one thing. Uh, we recently uh, analyzed, we, because we collect um, data of all our uh, trade executions, and we, recent, we recently uh, did a total breakdown uh, and detailed analysis of uh, our slippages for the entire 2021, for the entire year. And silver was one of the worst. Uh, so we had really, really <laughs> high uh, slippages on a silver. So for silver, you really need to have high average trade if you want to trade it. But overall, have a look. Uh, this strategy, 110K approximately, and just 7,000 drawdown, which is pretty awesome. Uh, mm. Especially on silver, such a low drawdown. Historical, not bad. So there's something about this market. There, there it's you know it's tough, but and it, it's there's a lot of slippage, but there are also good stuff about this market as well. Yeah, what I find interesting about this example here is the the percent profitable is quite high, sixty something percent, sixty five percent, which is usually uh, mean reversion type of territory rather than breakouts, right? So. That tells me maybe your maybe this strategy is buying on dips or you know shorting on rallies, waiting for a, a bit of a move the other way before it enters. So, actually, looking at the, yeah, mm. but actually looking at the uh, um, character of the equity curve uh, because I can already sh say a little bit from the profit character targets. of the equity curve. Yes, exactly. Profit targets. <laughs> there are there are profit targets, and I bet this is uh, something like two to one ratio, or even one to one and a half to one ratio. So, mm. so the ratio of the profit targets is on a lower side. That's why we have a high uh, percentage yeah. win percentage. Okay, that's a good tip. Thanks for that, Thomas. <clears throat> So uh, Eric would like to know, so these results that you're showing here, are they just based on one contract or they do they include dynamic position sizing? All of them are based on one contract, one contract only. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And from Egyptian, am I correct in thinking the silver contract is much higher value than gold? It's difficult to add to a portfolio of one contract, one contract strategies. Uh, I don't remember what the uh, what the value is, but it's quite similar to gold. Gold. Uh, it's got it's got uh, could be a little bit higher, but I think it's quite similar. It, it's got, you know, uh, this is not an obstacle. We're not talking about something that's important to consider. It's that that's not why it's a tough market. It's a tough market because you need to be very patient to get to develop a strategy because very few trading indicators or components or combinations of components work on this market. So that's why it's tough market uh, overall. Um, and, and you have slippages and gaps. But overall, um, you know, the value versus gold, I'm not sure if it's even important. Mm, yeah. And uh, also don't forget there's uh, micro, um, uh, micro, micro version, futures yeah. for golden gold and silver as well i think yeah i'm pretty sure i don't we don't trade them but i think there is micro gold and silver that's a good um, that's a good point 
<clears throat> yeah, Egyptian says twenty five versus ten dollars per tick. Oh, okay, a tick value. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I honestly don't even look at this because I don't find this information um, important. You know, for me, more always the important information is the average trade, net profit drawdown ratio, uh, and stuff like that. So I don't remember these this, uh, details. Don't. Mm. Yeah. Okay, that's the end of the questions on this one, Thomas. Do we have any more yeah. examples? Yeah, we do have also actually. I although I do not recommend it. I also uh, added one uh, plat uh, platinum. Okay. Uh, yeah, which looks pretty nice. However, there are some specific about platinum. So one of them is that uh, you will usually struggle with average trade, which every low average trade in combination with uh, with not really phenomenal execution. Let's put it this way. It's one of the challenges of this market. So. Uh, you know, you can get some really nice uh, strategies like this one and uh, look at the sample size, which is quite phenomenal. It's almost 2,000 trades. So uh, it's, it's, not, it's not a bad strategy. However, uh, the average trade, it's, it's really low. And, um, you know, it's, the execution can be, can be really challenging. So uh, it's doable. It's trade. It's under certain circumstances with certain parameters, uh, it's tradable. Uh, however, uh, I still would definitely recommend starting with gold. But uh, I'm not excluding this market. I'm just saying that we need to be more careful and we need to know uh, specifics of this tiny market. Hmm. Yeah. So I've got a question here from John. Good day, John. Thanks for the hey, question. John. Would you, would you use one tick in and one tick out for slippage, especially for the longer time templates? Yes, yes, that's that's what we use, except for the silver. Uh, in silver, I think you need to use realistically two ticks on entry and two ticks on exit because silver really, it's based on our data. It's one of the on, on the harder side. Hmm. But on the other hand, on the other hand, you should have uh, no problem on silver with swing trading strategies. Uh, the average trade should rather easily swallow uh, this higher transactional cost. Yep. All right. Thanks for explaining that. Good question, John. Yeah. Good question. Um, over, overall, <laughs> overall, I think overall, I think this is quite a good thing about medals in general that um, you that they do have tendency to produce higher average trade. Thus, uh, even they have higher transactional costs because of the higher slippage, the average trade quite often uh, is, especially with swing uh, strategies on metals, uh, can absorb higher um, slippages. So, so uh, this is a good market category for achieving higher average trades. So with some other categories, it's definitely way more difficult uh, than with with medals yep all right so i'm just going back to we had a couple of questions one from mark and one from christian i'm just trying to find them in the chat here's martin's let me put this one up comparing andrew's approach of mean reversion versus thomas's momentum which strategies worked for you and what kind of anomalies are observed in metals are they more momentum or mean reverting I only trade breakout strategies, so I cannot refer to mean reversion. Only breakout mm. strategies for me. Yeah. That's a, um, I don't know if we have a definitive answer for that one because I think those, met, those markets go through periods where they trend and then they go through periods where they're sideways. And so um, if you can adapt your strategies to trade in the specific market regimes, I think that's, ideal approach and that's something I've been working on for a while so it's not as easy as it sounds but uh, I think you, you, in, the, in the metal markets especially you get um, uh, times where you get both so being able to switch is probably the ultimate so I hope that helps Martin just stick with breakouts for now don't get distracted absolutely by, yes uh, do not styles. complicate it yep. Yeah, it's it's all about specialization. The most you specialize one direction, the more of a professional you'll become in that, and the better results you can get. Yeah. 
Okay, here's a question from Christian. Thanks for being patient on this one, Christian. It's a trade station question. I see that you use trade station. Do you or, <laughs> do you also keep experiencing stability issues with the software? Sorry, I'm laughing. I'm laughing because this happens to me as well. <laughs> yeah, we all do. Christian, yeah. we all do. Uh, but it's not just trade station. I, I used to use some other platforms in the past and I, I have not found an ideal platform quite honestly. Uh, also, the question is what kind of uh, trade station ver version do you use? Because so far, the most stable one, it's an mm -hmm. older one, it's 9.5. And 9.5, although it's it's got definitely its bugs and, and challenges, we already found workarounds and have <clears throat> protocols and yeah. we pretty much can function with 9.5. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah. There's no perfect trading software. I can guarantee that. I tried a lot of trading <laughs> software in the past, and uh, I, 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 I yet have to find the best one. Mm. Yep. Yeah, Rob said all the time. <laughs> all the time, yeah. yeah. Welcome to trading. <laughs> um, <laughs> Welcome to okay, trading, we... exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good We've got one. a question here from, from Mauricio. Mar I think I've said that correctly. Thanks for the question. Do you use CIT reports info as a filter for breakout strategies? Uh, commitment of traders? No, mm. I do not correctly. Correctly, I myself and in our hedge fund, we do not use it. However, as I said already uh, at the beginning, one of the uh, our break uh, our BTA uh, elite mastermind uh, traders, a great phenomenal trader, he does use it, and he shared uh, some of his. Uh, approach in the um, newsletter right uh, the ball trader uh, and it, it's really it's really it's quite amazing what he described so it's on our to-do list uh, because it can be directly used with our uh, breakout trading approach and uh, we're going to test it it's, it's quite exciting I think there's a lot of potential in commitment of trader as an addition addition layer to um, breakout trading. So definitely something that uh, we do keep uh, on our to-do list. Hmm. Yep. Okay, so that seems to be the last questions in the chat. So if you've got some more questions, please post them and uh, we can come back to them after the quote of the show. And I accidentally gave us all a sneak peek a moment ago, <laughs> so hopefully no one noticed. <laughs> I thought there was another slide before that, so my mistake. So, Thomas, do you want to uh, intro this one while I get it up on the screen? Yeah, let's get the, the quote of the day, which is the desire of gold is not for gold. It is for the means of freedom and benefit. And I pick this quote because I think it's a good reminder that the desire of trading is not for trading. It's for the means of freedom as well. So uh, whether your means to your freedom will be trading gold uh, as a future market or any other market, I think it's a quite important uh, to uh, remind ourselves that why we do it. Uh, and it's not just a freedom of time or money. It's also freedom of expression, freedom of do what we love to do, freedom of creativity, uh, freedom of uh, discovering new things, uh, which is all part of trading. And I think it's a beautiful part of trading. And uh, if you decide to use gold as one of the markets uh, for for achieving these goals, I think that uh, gold definitely will be a good choice. You will never go wrong with the gold market, uh, whatever you do. So that was the quote. Yeah, good quote. I like that one. Although if you ask my partner, I think she would probably disagree. She just likes gold for the gold. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, thanks for the quote, Thomas. Good job. So we got another question in the chat here. This one's from Arik. Let me put this one up on the screen for us all to see. Arik would like to know, which markets have a high correlation to metals, especially gold? I'm guessing it's indexes, but the correlation is probably not as high as that between indexes and energies such as oil. Uh, that's a good question, Arek, and it's also a little bit tricky question because the problem overall, uh, the problem is that indexes, uh, crude oil and gold are pretty interlinked uh, 
tight markets. And that means that sometimes we experience in markets, we experience moment of so-called linearity, which are very unpleasant moments when all three uh, markets can go against us at the same time. Uh, indexes, um, crude oil and uh, gold, because they really are interlinked. Mm. Uh, thus, on a paper, it looks like they are not correlated, but they do have these tendencies of uh, unfavorable moments of unfavorable linearity. That's why I always recommend do not just if you create your first portfolio, do not do not just rely on these three market sectors. That's why all, that's why I also introduce grains before metals, so uh, traders do not start with with these three. Uh, from the beginning, which could be potentially dangerous. It's really important to include some grain uh, market there as well, or meat or any other that we will talk about in some upcoming uh, episode. But do not rely mm. with your first portfolio on the combination of index, crude oil, and gold. It's tempting. It's quite fast and easy, but it can be tricky because of uh, this um, linearity. So good mm. question, Eric. Important. That is a good that, question. That's yeah. Thanks, Eric. Another question he, question here from Christian. <laughs> That's hard to say so early in the morning. Uh, Christian would like to know, have you ever tried adding confirmation requirements of the breakout to happen on the second front month contract in addition to the current front month? Well, yeah. I did not do it. I did not do it, never done it for the breakout. I don't think you really need it for breakout. Like we don't, we're, I'm not much into confirmation and double confirmation, triple confirmation. I'm more into statistical part probabilities and portfolio. I did some things like this with uh, intermarket, intercommodity, intel de delivery spreads, but that was discretionary trading, not uh, automated trading. Uh, I, I, I can't even imagine it much with algo trading practically but i honestly think never done it and i do i think it's not necessary that you can create a great portfolio of good simple strategies even without uh, these um, additional techniques hmm. we've got a comment here from martin i think I've, i missed this one i'm not sure how i missed this it's quite funny when we're talking about the desire of god is for the means of freedom freedom of waking up without an alarm <laughs> absolutely yeah. I feel you, yes. That's a good one. All right, well, that looks like that's all for the questions in the chat today. So mm -hmm. um, we can uh, start wrapping up, I think. So if you've enjoyed today, well, hopefully you have. Hopefully you got a lot of good tips for your trading uh, research and, and strategy development. Then please remember to give us a thumbs up on the video. We can see we've only got 11 thumbs up, which is pretty low. So please um, do it now while we're talking. And uh, that helps us to uh, get this video out to more people when uh, the YouTube algo sees that people are enjoying it. So please do that. And then also, if you have any trading questions, you're welcome to, well, you're welcome to come live and submit them in the chat, of course. If you can't make it, then you can also support, uh, sorry, email support at bettertraderacademy.com. And we do see those. Uh, we do have people answering those emails and we, we might feature your question in a uh, future episode, or even if you've got a strategy that you'd like Thomas to um, to review, then, yeah, we can do that too. So support at bettertraderacademy.com. Whatever you want us to review or talk about, guys, that's the email you can use. Okay, excellent. I can see the thumbs up are going up. So thank you, everyone, for your support there. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> um, Thomas, is there anything you wanted to uh, wrap up with? Anything you wanted to share? Uh, I think it, I think that's all. <laughs> Thank you for being with us as usually, guys. Uh, and um, we will be back in two weeks with uh, another market sector. I, I don't know which one yet, but definitely with a diff with another one. Yeah. <laughs> I got to share this one from Scope. Thanks, all your presentations are trading gold. Ah, we, nice uh, one. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Actually, we forgot all the metal jokes today. We should have uh, the metal puns. They're always always fun. So we got a thank you from Eric Gus. Hey, Gus. 
I didn't see any questions from Gus today. Thanks. Thank you for all your support. So, um, thanks for attending today. Hope you found a lot of uh, great info. Martin, of course. You know who we didn't see today? Olga. No questions from Olga. Hmm, so, I hope yeah, she true, managed to join us. If not, then uh, she can get the recording. So, Egyptian, learn something today. That's good. Hopefully, you learn something every day, Egyptian. Uh, Hugo, thanks. Giorgio, thank you. A uh, couple more. John, awesome guidance and tips. Thank you both. Mauricio, thanks for attending. Thanks for your question as well. Um, oh, my goodness. It's going quick, too quick there. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for your question as well. Rob, good stuff. Thanks again. And Andrew is back to bed. Oh, thanks for getting that, up that out of bed. to me as well. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> 10 p.m. here. <laughs> and I'm back to the coffee machine. It's just starting for oh. the day. So thanks, everyone, for attending today. Great show. Thank you for sharing, especially all that information behind the scenes in your hedge fund development. Thomas, I think that is super valuable. I don't know anywhere else where we get to peek behind the curtain like that. So thanks again. And uh, anything else? Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, guys. And we will be back. Breakout all trading right. concert. <laughs> Catch you again in two weeks' time. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.